Hello and welcome to another weekend and another edition of State Line for the ACT and surrounding region. I'm Philip Williams. But first, the township of Thawa, just south of Canberra, has suffered a number of blows in recent years. The devastation of the 2003 fires, the drought and more recently the closures of both the school and the bridge. Thawa locals say they can overcome almost anything, but in the end it may be government indifference that damns their village. I spent a day amongst the community of Thawa. It may be within view of Canberra's southern suburbs, but right now the residents of Thawa feel they're out of sight and very much out of mind. Around here you'll often hear the C word. Community. 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 We foster community development and that sort of thing. A word these people say is undervalued and misunderstood. Do you think that the, the ACT government has any idea of what, what your going through? No, none whatsoever. And I don't think they really care. What, what, what sort of classification do you think they've put Thawa into? Too hard basket. Far too hard. Can't do with it. There's, we were actually told not long ago by a, one of the local pollies there's not enough photos out here. This is part of the problem, the bridge too far. The lifeline to Canberra was severed last year when engineers suddenly deemed it unsafe even to walk on. What have you been told officially is the problem with this bridge? Uh, well, nobody's uh, specified the problem, uh, Phil. Uh, I've just been told that it's unsafe and full stop, that's it. What do you think? Well, I believe it's uh, perfectly safe for cars to cross at this point in time. I haven't got any indication that it's uh, in any state to fail uh, and I think that uh, it needs a very serious reassessment of the situation. But it's the damage to the social structure of his beloved community that most worries local shop owner and unofficial mayor Val Jeffrey. Oh, I've firstly decimated the village. I mean, the businesses are feeling it. But it's not only the businesses, it's the personal things, uh, like getting to the school, the closure of the school, having to go around, having to travel the very, very torturous roads. They are very dangerous roads, the Angle, Angle Road and the Point Hut Road. Uh, I get reports of close shows every day. <laughs> How different the scene here just 12 years ago as the district celebrated the centenary of the mighty Thawa Bridge. We're in the middle of uh, celebrations for the uh, centenary of the Thawa Bridge, which that's 100 years since it was opened, 100 years since it was christened, and uh, we thought it was rather an appropriate time to have a celebration, any, any excuse for a celebration, any rate a party, so we've made this a week-long party. That party is well and truly over. With passing tourists a passing memory, businesses have shut up shop. We lost 80% of our uh, drive-by traffic, uh, which forced us to close our business. We couldn't keep our gallery open any longer, and um, with the hope that the bridge might open soon. Despite desperate pleas for a reprieve, the ACT government closed the historic primary school last year. <laughs> and now, with the closed bridge cutting off potential enrolments from Canberra, the preschool is also at risk. If it doesn't get numbers, we can't keep going. Um, I'm not sure what the department line is on it, but uh, we won't be viable if there's only five. So you could go the same way as the primary school? Possibly. Where would that leave Thawa? With not very much at all. Uh, this, the preschool as it's running this year has been a huge... Um, anchor for people in the community. Uh, having that link still open has been really important. People have come and gathered at the school every Tuesday for a choir. Past students have come um, from Thawa who used to go to the primary school. It's been really important for them to have that continuity. 
uh, and also the locals. It's still a thriving, it's a hub. Very few government, governing bodies really understand what community is and I think when they feel like they can control the money and the finances but not really consider the people, I think there's a great loss. We worry for Jasmine that she's a child in the community growing up here, local at Barumba, and she, we want a place for her to gather and be with her community. So let's go for keeping Thal Preschool open. It's so important for us. Hopefully by the time this baby is school age there will be a brand new bridge. Jessie, hop in sweetie. But for now parents must make the long trek to and from Canberra schools via Point Hut Crossing. Parents like Mandy Curtis say the school bus which is already full goes too early and comes home too late for the primary school kids. Well, I've now got a 33 kilometre trip to get my daughter to school and then another 33 kilometres to get her home from school with the bridge shut. It certainly gives us a sense of isolation over there, particularly from Thawa, because obviously, you know, Thawa was a very strong community and is, is very much struggling at the moment. Tell me the difference you notice between the Thawa of a couple of years ago and the Thawa today. Uh, well, I don't notice it because I don't see it anymore. Um, I have to go the other way to town, the long way to town, and uh, this morning I was greeted with a Happy New Year by one of the people here. Um, I don't see them anymore. After the fires of 2003, this community was very close together, operated beautifully as a community. We got major help from outside, from wonderful people, and uh, it drew the whole community together. And that continued over for some time but we've had two body blows to this community and they've been almost fatal. And the first one is the school and the second one is the bridge. And that's fracturing our community's sense of closeness to each other and being able to get in touch with each other and be what is generally described as a community. It affects your, your community as your therapy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah your own therapy. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's lacking in, in most of the big cities is people don't sit, over, sit around over a meal often enough and just talk like how's your day been if it's been shit house you say so and that's what we do here miles costello has shelved plans to open to the public not enough passing trade and with his first child expected any second he's had to factor in the extra time to travel to hospital just across the river, Brian Reed is sorting out his cattle, as he's done for decades. But he can't wrangle his social life quite so easily. His 60-second trip across the bridge to the village is now at least a 40-minute round trek. Well, most of my friends live over that side of town. We have the Thawa shop, which is a meeting place, which we all sort of meet on a Friday or a Thursday afternoon. Um, I hardly ever get over there now. It's, it's difficult because the, you just can't get across the bridge, and when the water's up... Uh, you ride your motorbike through and the water wasn't too high, but now the water's up a little bit, you can't uh, sort of ride across, so we don't go, otherwise you've got to drive around, and to drive around is difficult. Um, so, yeah, friends over there, we don't see as much as we should, and they don't come around to see me as much as they should. I guess the, the ACT government would say, well, what are you complaining about? We're fixing it. We're putting millions in. We're putting millions in, yeah. Um, the Thower Bridge was closed September last year, and uh, if you look down there now, there's nothing happened. Hang on, we'll just push these down. Down the bottom here, get out of the way. Yeah, well, I haven't been over to Thawa to the shop on a Thursday or Friday afternoon to see all the locals and catch up on what's going around and what's going on. I oh, to be for months, be two or three months. And that used to be a regular feature of your life? Oh, yeah, every Friday, if not every Friday, it'd be every Thursday. You know, you definitely make the effort to get across there once a week to see the locals, to see what's going on and, and that what's happening in the district. And when you don't do that, what do you lose? Well, companionship and you rely on a lot of pulling up on the sides of the road and talking and finding out what's going on between the locals that way. Doesn't so. quite, not quite the same? No, nowhere near the same. <laughs> it is that sense of togetherness, community, that attracts many here in the first place to share the best and the very worst of times. We've had um, the loss of a beautiful little girl to leukaemia, which was my daughter in 2005, another dear friend of mine, breast cancer. All of those things just are manifesting on what exactly what's going on in this little village. Suicide is dreadful and I wouldn't be surprised. It's a kind of extended family. Oh. Uh, 
well, we wouldn't have survived oh, the yeah. loss of our daughter without this community. Yeah. And, and um, pretty sensitive stuff, but when we were up in Sydney, she was in Sydney Children's Hospital, um, we were told she was going to die, and her only concern was, Mummy, am I going home to Thawa? And I said, darling, I'll take you home to Thawa. So she's buried here in our local cemetery, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And there were 600 people at that funeral. <laughs> yes. 600 voters at that funeral. I think the, the uh, sadness and the feeling of hopelessness that there is now, uh, after the bushfires and uh, we had the hope and uh, we got together to go forward, uh, we were ignored then but we took ourselves forward. Uh, we've battled the droughts and we've battled droughts before. Uh, we'll battle fires again, we'll battle more for, uh, droughts again in the future, but this is just sapping the last little bit out of people now. There is no money measure of a tight-knit community, but it feels real enough. So too the sense they're on the wrong side of the river and almost off the map. The people of Thawa tell me that they're depressed, they're angry, they're feeling forgotten by your government. They need a school, they need a bridge and they need a sense of commitment from your government. What can you offer them? Look, I've been concerned about the folks at Thawa for, for a very long time. We know that the absence of the bridge is causing hardship and we're asking folks to be a bit patient. In fact, in about a week's time they should see a drilling rig in the middle of the river doing the testing of the sand base to where the pylons will go for the new bridge. We haven't been able to move as quickly as we'd like because the money has to roll and the money before the new bridge will roll from the 1st of July. That's the nine and a half million that we're getting. So we are moving quickly. We recognise that, that Thawa Village is the gateway to the Namaji National Park. It's the home of people who are hurting at the moment and we are very conscious of it and that's why we're moving as quickly as we can. I guess they're arguing that you slammed that gate shut. You haven't moved quickly enough rebuilding the bridge or building a new bridge or putting a low-level crossing. Well, I would say to the, to the folks at Thawa, I've explained to them uh, as much as I can that it, the low-level crossing would cost a million dollars and we'd have to move it. It would only be there for a, a 12 months and we spend a million dollars for a low-level crossing. We can't do it. Will you guarantee to keep that preschool open even if the numbers aren't quite up there? That the people who are using the Thawa preschool aren't only the villagers in Thawa and aren't only the rural leaseholders. They're in fact people from the suburbs of Gordon, Condra and Banks. Of course, well. without a bridge, they're not going to use it. Well, they will be able to get a bridge. We've got $10 million put aside for it. Not the, in drilling time. Rig, the drilling rig will appear. Now, will it be there in time for next year, though? I mean, it, it, w basically, will you guarantee the viability of that preschool in the meantime if there's a gap between the bridge finishing and low enrolments? I'm expecting, in fact, that the bridge will be, be, will be completed around about October of next year. Now, there, is no, there are no plans... To, uh, to close, change, look at the Thawa preschool in the foreseeable future. I guess the baseline for the message that I'm getting from the, from the uh, Thawa people, and they're very passionate about this, they've lost business, they've lost institutions. What they say is the government isn't valuing the principle of community and not understanding the importance of community. The folks at uh, Thawa also need to, I suppose, uh, to understand that we do uh, share the hurt and the pain that they're having. We recognise that the lifeblood of the bridge is the most important thing. And Godspeed to those that end up building that bridge. They certainly need it down there. It would be a huge uh, lift for their spirits.